All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to American Vindicta. Yet another round of me and Bob Griswold. We're going to talk about some current events, some stuff going on in the news, and uh, our various opinions on the political assassination attempts against Donald Trump and the like, and uh, the gross misjustice that's being done to the people from January 6th. Bob, let's just get started right in. I sent you an article of Joe Biggs. He used to be a a uh, news reporter and broadcaster on InfoWars. He's a former staff sergeant, Army infantry cat, had multiple deployments, I think, to Iraq and Afghanistan, around the same time frame as me. He's only two, two or three years older than me. So um, he goes to January 6th. He, uh, you know, he became in the leadership of the Proud Boys, left InfoWars, uh, started doing his own thing, got, got caught up in January 6th. And now the judge today says that he's going to get 17 years or 18 years um, in prison for destroying a fence, what they call destroying a fence, which I'm fairly certain he didn't destroy a fence. Now, they said that these charges, his actions were so heinous that him and his counterparts brought an entire Congress to heal. That's a quote. And that um, they originally wanted 30 years or 33 years, and they tacked on a terrorism charge on top of it. Meanwhile, no one has been uncovered from the Jeffrey Epstein list. Absolutely. Um, meanwhile, not one felony was even fully prosecuted from 2020 with all the riots that we experienced in Oregon, just in Portland alone, let alone around the country. And the border's still wide open, fentanyl still pouring in, human sex slave trafficking is still going on, and yet they're going after the patriots who want to take the country back. Now, and don't forget Vicks, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden that that this is the lowest hanging fruit for a prosecutor i think absolutely. that has ever existed i mean it's touching the ground you you, you just it's there they, they they could prosecute him on a dozen charges easily but nothing hillary clinton we can't forget that one dead bang 18 right. felonies yeah. that she had 18. a private e email server in her home violating national security, national security act and nothing happens to her James Comey, uh, pencil neck shift, both knowingly lied about the Russia collusion. They knowing that they knew that that that, that uh, dossier was fake from the very get go. Nothing happens to them. Oh, and, and let's not forget Ray Epps. You know the guy who actually is on video uh, promoting insurrection or rebellion or rioting. I would say rioting. He's there. You hear him. You can watch him. It's funny how he hasn't had one charge brought against him. Not one. You see federal law enforcement agents cutting fences, cutting fences so that people can go through. Yep. You see um, the one guy. Well, it's, uh, it's, go ahead. it's now known that there was 80 federal law enforcement involved. 80. But yet, where are their charges? You know, it's okay for it's okay for us when we do it, but when the American people gets pissed off and mad about it, and they decide it's time to take the country back. Look, you know, Joe Biggs and everyone out there had a point to what they were saying and to what they were doing, but they were misguided. They were misguided, and obviously not backed up. Donald Trump hadn't been able to do jack nor squat about any of it, and if his only plan is to you know get reelected and to do a mass pardon of everybody well how many people have already died in the dc jail no Where, they, they don't get their pardon their, their incomes have been destroyed their lawyer their families lawyers, destroyed the lawyer this consumed everything that they've bob, ever made in life bob this is what happens when you follow a man in politics to a fault when you say that we are going to be pissed off and mad about it, we're going to go out and protest and support our president. 
This is the consequence now. Yeah, I'm going to throw a left ball, a left uh, curve. You know, this is the consequence of the government observing compliant sheep. Oh, you wear a, we'll wear a mask. Oh, you'll wear another mask. Oh, you'll wear three masks. Oh, you know, we got to put another leech on you because the first leech didn't work. Um, you know, oh, you need another leech. Now you've got four leeches sucking your blood. And, you know, oh, yeah, you, you can't go outside and don't, but for goodness sake, don't breathe fresh air. Um, you know, and this is why, again, it doesn't do any good to say no violence because Donald Trump said no violence peacefully. He said peacefully, but peacefully, absolutely peacefully, peacefully, peacefully. I just want to say that a lot of times. We do not comply with any more mask mandates. Peacefully, we do not comply with any more vaccine mandates. Peacefully, we do not commit acts of violence. They're the ones that commit the acts of violence. They're the ones that commit the criminal acts. I mean, you know, if you want to look at insurrection, look what these people, what, what Biden has done, selling the country out to the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, everybody who was willing to give them money, they have it absolutely dead bang. Um, he sold the country out, gave top secret information. Hunter Biden wanted to giving stealth technology to the Chinese for money. And and nothing happens. But and, and I don't agree with it. I don't agree with, with a trespassing charge. I, I would not personally, I would not have gone onto the Capitol grounds. Um, I'm, I smell a rat there because I've always told people if police officers are telling me I can speed, that doesn't make it legal. So if a police officer says, you know, Bob Griswold, you know, see this stretch of road right here is pretty safe. You can go down and speed down that road at 120 miles an hour. That's cool. I, I'm going to start. Mm, what's going on here? I'm going to be sus very, very suspicious. A police officer cannot give you permission to break the law, even a trespassing law. So there, there's that, a legal word. There's a legal word there. It's called entrapment. Yeah, entrapment. So uh, if a police officer or federal law enforcement or anybody says, you know, cuts a fence and tries to make me go somewhere where I know there's it's it's it is trespassing. You, hey, Bob Griswold ain't doing that. I'm not doing it. Um, it I'm, my mama didn't raise no fool. And I'm not saying anybody who did do it is a fool. I'm just saying I, I'm just too suspicious uh, when when they're saying, go ahead and do that. It's OK. Speed down the road 120 miles an hour. I give you permission to sell those drugs. You know, I give you permission to go kidnap that child. Uh, they can't do things like that. Their job is to uphold the law, not facilitate the breaking of the law. And so when a police officer is giving you the, the I'm, I'm going to facilitate you breaking the law. Boy, you know what, what did quick draw McGraw used to say? Now I dated myself saying that uh, exit stage left, get out of there. Um, and, and so that's what we see. Ray Epps hasn't been charged. Hillary Clinton hasn't been charged. And these are these are these truly are now Ray Epps um, insurrection is 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 a punish of uh, punishable uh, crime by death. Hillary Clinton's crime could be punishable by death. You know, Comey's and, and all those who involved with Russia collusion is, can be punishable by death. Absolutely, Joe and Hunter Biden can be punishable by death. The whole Biden family could be punishable by death because it's all that those crimes eat. The Constitution of the United States of America says that those crimes can be punishable by death. And yet not one person has been charged. Let me ask you. And not one, as you said, well, not let one me person has been charged from Jeffrey Epstein. We're, we're, let's, put, let's just put it graphically. Young girls and boys, prepubescent young girls and boys were brought down there raped multiple times and and who knows what these deviants do because you know sex criminals don't just get into standard sex they want to hurt they want to humiliate they want to do all kinds of stuff like that and then you know there's a lot of children that went through there we know very few of them that came out of there so what did they, what happened to the rest it's kind of like the maui thing there's a lot of children missing there's a lot of children missing that went to epstein island what happened to them but no, nobody's nobody's been who, who went down there. You don't have a list. I guarantee you the federal government has a list. Well, you live in a day now where with you even talking about this subject and declaring that the president or his ilk 
could be potentially put to death. They consider that a threat upon his life. I, I, I'm just now, saying that's what the Constitution says. Even if you, says. even if you, oh well, but the Constitution's a whole document, Bob, and needs to be updated, right? That's what they say. Second Amendment needs to be abolished. Your First Amendment's a little bit too lax. And if we give the bastards, house, not break into your house and car to manufacture evidence. No, we we can do that. If if we give the bastards enough rope, they'll hang us all with it. Well, they about did during, you know, uh, well, we can't uh, about about when they when they had that last crisis, the sea crisis, um, the one that's coming back. Yeah, the one that's coming back is being resurrected. It's their version of the satanic death, burial and resurrection, um, you know, and it'd be the second coming for the death cult, um, you know, so. Forgive me for using religious analogy, but to them, it is religious analogy because to them, they are a death cult. Um, so, but that's what it is. And I, I do, I, I, anybody who knows me knows I promote anything but violence. I promote peaceful resistance because it worked for Rosa Parks. It worked for Martin Luther King. It's worked for so many people. Um, you, you know, it worked for the disciples. Barabbas was the one who wanted to swing the sword and, you know, he, where did he go? He got, you know, crucified eventually, I'm sure. But the disciples who didn't pick up a sword and start whacking the Romans apart, they promoted the gospel of Jesus Christ peacefully, and they changed the Roman Empire. Um, they, you know, they eventually, their, the message that Jesus gave them uh, conquered the Roman Empire. And so, you know, that's that's me. That's Bob Griswold. Um now, that's not saying I would not defend my family or, or you know, defend somebody being injured. I would. But um, to change the government, it's going to be done when thousands and thousands, millions of people just say, no more. We're not doing this anymore. We're not doing it anymore. You can do whatever you want. I'm not doing it anymore. You know, it says, well, you know, this, and, and Daniel, it this says, is just my. Go ahead. This is just my personal opinion. But we're not the same America as we were in 1776 no. or the 1800s or the early 1900s for World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, the Rosa Parks. We are not that America anymore. We are beyond Rome. Yes. Yeah. We well, are see, Babylon now. The multi- be, but but because, because of that, the sins are matching that time, though, Bob. The Absolutely. sins are matching it, and the freedom is gone. Why do you think they promote a multicultural, not multi-ethnic? A multi-ethnic society can work. If you have cultural harmony, homogeny, it can work. You know, um, we speak the same language. We have the same religion. You know, we have the same origin. I, I was watching this black guy today, and he was, he was uh, uh, I guess, in every way you would consider him um, ghetto. Excuse me. That's what he was. Um uh, Profound, profane language and everything. But you know what? I agreed with his message. And he even referred to the founding fathers. You know, he even said, I'm going to jack you up if you come to give me that vaccine. You know, see, that's multi-ethnic. I I, 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 I could get in the same, you know, thing with that guy. Um, but when you have multicultural, and this is what the globalists do, where they put all these cultures together and shake them up, and they know it's not going to work. And they know it's going to create violence and, and uh, 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 you know, factions, sectarianism. It's going to create all that. That's why they do what they do. Um, if you go to Gab, I, I posted on my Gab account because you, uh, YouTube would have taken it down um, immediately. Uh, you can watch that guy. Uh, but with that said, you know, they, they, that's why we're not the same. In the Civil War, we were the same. Even in the Revolutionary War, we were Christian, we spoke English, we had the same common history. A lot of black people fought in the Civil War. They fought for, for freedom in the Civil War. They were our brothers in arms. So, But what the globalist seeks to do is to make sure none of that can ever happen again. The Asian man and the white man and the black man and the brown man, red man, they can, we can't get along. We can't get along. And so... They, they 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 exacerbate that and um and do that. But I when I was watching that black guy today, I'm sure you know we didn't have a lot in common as far as our lives are concerned. But man, I tell you what, I tell that black guy, Amen, brother, preach it. 
I'm not going to take the vaccine, you know, the vax, the, the V. I'm not going to do it. And um, uh, I, I agreed with him. So I could march in a, in a, in a uh, uh, you know, a, a resistance parade with him. So, but that that's what they want to do. You know, we have to remember, and this is what we see in Daniel 11, I think it's 32. It says th that this the Antichrist or the Antichrist spirit or the Antichrist, because the Bible says there are many Antichrists, there will be one main Antichrist, will seduce with flattery that, that those who violate the covenant. And we just see the covenant of God today being violated left and left and right, left and right, left and right. Nothing. I mean, it's nothing to see people up there mocking the blood of Jesus, mocking the Son of God, mocking the work of Christ on the cross, mocking no any fear of that. God. Yeah, no fear. But it says, they that know their God see, they, they shall do exploits. Now, the, the way most Christians in America want it today is they should do exploits. The thing about knowing your God, does that mean I have to spend time in prayer? Does that mean I can't download porn? D does that mean I have to live a holy life? Does that mean I have to be the leader of my family and study the Bible and do all that? Yeah, that, that's what it does mean, buddy. That's what it means. And then if you do those things, you, you can do exploits. But you're not going to do the exploits without knowing your God. And that's what the church today doesn't know. The church today doesn't know God. You know, in, in the scripture, it says that the, the children of Israel saw the works of God, but Moses knew his ways. I, I forgot what, I think it's Psalm 103. Somebody, somebody look it up and put it in the comment section. Uh, the children of Israel saw the works of God, but Moses knew his ways. It's, it's, I mean, you know, you could go to the 4th of July fireworks show and you can sit there and be dazzled by all the, you know, booms and bangs and colors and, you know, flashes and all that, you see that happening. But there's a pyrotechnician down there who knows why it's happening. He knows all the things he's mixed together and how to ignite it and do all that. And, and that's the way it is with God. M most people can sit there and see the works of God. Wow, look, magic show. Um, but they don't know his ways. They don't walk with him. They don't seek his face. They, they, they're they alien to him. You don't have to be a pyrotechnician to enjoy the fireworks show. You don't have to be a Christian to enjoy the the blessings of God in some ways. I mean, I, I can live by biblical standards of marriage and have a good marriage but not be a Christian. You know, I, I can live that kind of moral life and 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 see the blessings that that brings but not know god so it says they that know their god will do exploits and so this is the thing today this is why we're in the mess we're in because the church of jesus christ does not know or promote the knowledge of god that's getting a little out there i mean you really want to talk with god you want to walk with jesus in the midst of the garden uh you god talks to you uh, you know, Doug, I'm, hey, hey, we got to stay away from Doug. You know, Doug, Doug thinks he talks to God. Doug thinks he walks with Jesus. You know, it's okay to be a Christian, but not that kind of Christian. Um, that, that's what we see today. And that's why we see this country ruled by reprobates and deviants, sex perverts, traitors, liars. You could go on greedy. That's why we see it. And um, that's why the that's why a gun will never take America back. Get it through your head. A gun will never take America back. It's only as the oh, church of Jesus Christ bows on their knee and rents their clothes over what we've allowed. We've allowed children to be mutilated and not said a word. We talk about our vacation, mm -hmm. but we children are being mutilated. But, you know, I, I can't say anything about that. Go ahead, Doug. No, I mean, that's that's what I've been saying the whole time. Um there's not a physical solution to a spiritual problem, as Quail always says. Yes. But I'll tell you what, there is a physical dilemma that has come about from our spiritual problem. We, we chose to ignore a physical problem on the spiritual level, yes. and now we think we can solve the spiritual problem on the physical level. 
you know, where was the church of Jesus Christ when Kinsey was talking about, um, excuse me, how many orgasms he could make a baby have in an hour? And he did. He did that. I mean, I don't mean to be crude or rude or vulgar. But I think you need to explain who that person is. Kinsey was a sex therapist who in the 50s, you know, wanted to find out about human sexuality. And, and part of it was child sexuality. So he took everything from babies to prepubescent children and through stimulation and other means, wanted to see how sexual children, how sexual children were. And he did some heinously criminal and gross demonic things to children, including what I just mentioned. You know, how many times could I stimulate a child in an hour? And the church didn't say anything. You know, if anything, it was like, wow, this is new science. We got to go along with this. The church didn't say anything. In 1973, there was a small outcry, and I hate to say it, mainly Catholic, um, that resisted abortion. You know, when Barack Obama, the, the the whole gay marriage thing in the Supreme Court legalized that marriage, marriage cannot be two men getting a, a union together because God defined marriage. You can't redefine it. God defines it. You know, math defines two plus two. As much as I want to say two plus two equals five or six or whatever, it, it doesn't make it so. It's wrong. You can't make two plus two equal five. You you can't do it. Um, and, and no matter how much the the world wants to redefine the law of God. You know what it says? With flattery, he those that violate the covenant. And these are the people that violate the covenant. So we flatter those that violate the covenant. We flatter the traitor. We flatter the pervert. We flatter the thief. We flatter the proud. We flatter all of them. But those that know their God will do exploits. What's an exploit, Doug? You want, what do you think an exploit is? A great work? A mighty manifestation of of change, uh, you know. Did, did Martin Luther King do an exploit? I mean, in in, in changing the na the nation's psyche towards African American people. Do you think that's what January sixth was? Um, I, I yes, I do. I, I I think I I have some conflicting thing. I think probably some pre, um, some more pre-statements should have been made. Donald Trump made one, but I, I would have, if I'd been up there, I'd say, listen, anybody who encourages you to do anything wrong, to trespass, to violate the law in any way is your enemy. Do not go in the Capitol. Do not do anything like that. Go down there and peacefully protest. I don't think I'd have laid it out a little bit clearer. Okay. Um, but Boy, yes, here, overall, here's the problem. Yeah. Here's the problem. Once again, here's, here's the problem but, once again with, trying to have a physical solution for a spiritual problem yes everybody showed up um like i said i think righteously um over january 6 and i i am i am very upset at the fact that joe biggs is being yes well, well, Doug, gross grossly mistreated and it, it, here's the thing it's it's your veterans it's your veterans who are who are trying to expose the the evilness of this government and the government can't lose power because when they get out of office what do they have besides chains and bars which is where they'll go and they know it which is why I don't think they'll ever let Trump become president again regardless if you think that man's righteous sent from god whatever man i've heard so many stupid ass prophecies about donald trump from that firefighter guy um, trying to sell books about Trump to everyone else in the red pill community, the Christian community, the political right, the political left. This is what I'll tell you. Um, as someone who worked in federal law enforcement, he was my commander in chief. I saw him try to do the right thing. And I saw the swamp rise up and swallow everything that he thought that he could get accomplished he was incompetent in some things. He was naive in some things. And he should have put Hillary Clinton below the prison. Yeah. And they know for a fact that that man is so genuine that if he gets elected again, it will happen. Yeah, it'll, it'll it be the wrecking will ball. happen. It will be the wrecking ball. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. I want to go back to you. Do you, you think it was the genuine movement January 6th? How many people were there? 
hundreds, thousands. Millions. I think they were saying close thousands. to a million, pe million yeah. people. Yeah, people were there. Not on the, yeah, not just, the Capitol. Just, just on. No, I'm talking about. Yeah, the just whole, on the Capitol with thousands. The, the aggregate of people that were there was close to a million people is what they say. I remember seeing the pictures. Yep. So, yep. and how many people basically did anything violent during that time? Less than a hundred. I mean, if, if there was going to be violence to be done, it would have been done. It's just like the way it's done in every other country. When a big group of a million people who say they're coming there to revolt, they're coming there to replace the government, like in Africa and some of these middle Eastern countries and some of these old Soviet bloc countries, it actually happens. Yeah. See, I, I knew an AC captain and went there. And he he went there. He didn't go on the Capitol grounds. He went there to do that. That's why, uh, again, you know, if at that movement had had the Holy Spirit really led those people, and people were on their knees, crying out to God for forgiveness for the nation and the wickedness and the leaders, and that God would deal with those leaders and remove them from power. And, and then that was taken back to the churches and the churches gave it to their congregations. And throughout the United States, we had a renewal. It could have been totally different. If, if, if the pastors would encourage the congregation, you know, to repent of their sins, you notice it 37% of pastors and 67% of laity look at porn weekly. How do you expect God to work in a church like that? I mean, you know, you know, when 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 parents, according to Dobson, are more concerned, far more concerned with the school that their children go to, as far as my kid, my kid went into Harvard, than the spiritual condition of their children. How can you expect God to bless a nation when parents send their children into these schools, knowing that the school's going to do hide and promote gender dysphoria? And we see that being displayed throughout the nation and, and knowing the fact that that I think it's nine over 95 percent of children that go through the public school system, K-1 through 12th grade. What is it? Over 80 some percent will never set foot in a Christian church ever again. When materialism, lying, greed, all that overtake the church of Jesus Christ and there's such sin in the camp like um, Achan, when there's sin in the camp, when, when we're, we're taking the idols of Babylon into our camp, and we expect, let's pray for America, because I want to get home and download some porn. Let, let's pray for America, because I, I want to, you know, make sure I get my ego stuff set with, you know, what school, I'm going to brag about what school my kid's going to and how much money I make. And uh, well, how do we expect God to bring change in America. How? It's not going to happen. And, and this is why I, I say it's time for America to repent. I, Dave, Doug, I do believe we cannot turn the nation around right now without a major upheaval. I do. But um, it doesn't negate the fact that Jesus didn't tell me. To, he goes, I want you to go out into the world and make a lot of money and own a big house in Pill Hill. He'll, he'll be in the doctor place where doctors live. Um, I, I, he didn't say that. I want you to go out and make sure your children are successful and go to the right schools and do all this other stuff. You know, drive a nice fancy car. I want you to make sure now um, you have a nice 401k when you, so that you, when you get, retire, you can, you know, have a life of leaves and travel a lot. Those are the things that concern Americans. But Jesus never said them. Jesus said, I want you to go and preach the gospel, the gospel, the good news to every living creature. I see that thing on your screen there. You know, preach the gospel to that. And well, and let me let me tell converts. you. Let me let me tell you about that real quick. Yet again, this is one of the many problems in our country. I'm not afraid to say it. Others might be. Um we had a we had a point 100 years ago or so of how we would treat people like this and what we would do with them mm. but now you have to deal with this because we become weak soft-brained 
soft-handed men. Listen to this. ACLU sues Indiana over denial of sex reassignment surgery for an inmate who strangled an 11-month-old baby to death. This guy wants to go to a girl prison. That's what it's about. He doesn't want to go to a guy this, prison. He wants to go to a woman this, prison. This is, what, this is what the inmate told the detectives. Well, all I know is I killed the little effing bitch. That's a direct quote from the court records. This thing right here. What we should do is we should take it out back and draw and quarter it. That's what we should do. Look, I... Uh, that thing would have never made it to court 100 years ago. God God forbid Doug ever becomes president of the United States because I would become a dictator within the first day. There has to come a point in time and it will happen either the right way or the wrong way, where if you're going to clean up your act, it's going to be through a dictatorship that's like when Caesar was given power and then it has to be given back over. The problem is Caesar's never relinquished the power, no. which is once again the problem with man and why we're so fallible, right? We can't be trusted with the power. That's but this is the this is the outcome. That's a normal thing that you're looking at now. That is normal and to see not this. Shocked. It's not. It doesn't blush. It's not shocked. You know, um, there was a saying um, in the Middle Ages: Lex Rex Rex Lex Rex Lex Rex Lex Lex Rex Rex Lex. The 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 king is not law. The law is king. And this is why no man. It should ever be a dictator. No man ever should hold whole power. This is what the, the 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 founders had in mind that they wanted a decentralized power so much that we never had entrenched bureaucracy like we have today. I mean, Mitch McConnell. Well, you know, I want, I want to the, do a, the problem. Let me, let me do a, an imitation of Mitch McConnell. I mean, sorry. I mean, and I'm not making fun of his health condition, but he's too old to serve. Because he's oh, I don't care about ever. I, I don't care about the man's health. His wife's father is one of the head of the Chinese Communist Party military. Okay, let's explore that, that a bit. When, when somebody is in that mode, do you think he can be exploited for knowledge he has? Absolutely. I mean, willingly or unwillingly. Has, has. I mean, oh, you, he willfully did it. You know, yeah. he willfully did it. I mean, it's it's. I look, and then and then you have Diane Feinstein, who's even worse than he is. Joe Biden, he goes to Maui and forget forgets what island he's on. Uh, tells absolutely inappropriate jokes about saving his Corvette and a little kitchen fire. The the FEMA agents are staying in you know multi thousand dollar rooms, while well, there are other rooms available. Uh, Jesse Waters showed there were $250, I think, Best Western rooms available. Well, we give the people of Lahaina $700. And $700. Um, th this is why there is no man. There's not a dictator that's going to solve it. There's not anybody who's going to solve it because it is a spiritual issue, and you cannot put the demons in the bag without the power of Jesus Christ. You cannot, you know— Put, close them behind the gates. Jesus said, my church is like, a, uh, it, it, you, it's the gates of hell shall not be prevail, prevail. We have to round up those forces spiritually. This is what spiritual warfare is about. You have to round them up, push them behind the gates of hell, push the doors closed and lock them. And only the, only the church of Jesus Christ can do that. There is no other power on earth that can do that. And and as and as the Christian Church, I don't want to say the heathens because the heathens are the heathens. But as the Christian Church has abdicated their role and authority in doing that, then we just see every vile and evil thing manifest itself in our community. And it, you you pulled up that little creature that you know strangled that little blanking blank to death that he could make that comment. child. Yeah, I know. Child. Child. child feed them feed them to the lions 
Yeah. Look, you know, look, I like I said, um, I'm a fallible creature, but if you don't righteously get out in front of the evil, then you let the evil get out in front of the righteous man. Well, the righteous man has to catch up. And there is nothing, nothing calm or suggestively appropriate about war. And that is what we're going to have in this country because we allowed ourselves to be destroyed by our, our lusting need for our sins. And we chose to throw God out. We chose to throw the law out. We chose to let these reprobates stay in power uh, to the point that they have given themselves so much power in the Capitol, in the White House, that the Constitution really is null and void to them. Yeah, you know, it like it the movie exist. Patriot. Yeah, what? like the movie Patriot. What, what why did, trade? Wait, 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 wait. What did George why? Bush call the Constitution? A GD piece of paper. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Well, I mean, remember, remember Big Mike? Uh, occasionally known as Michelle Obama for Memorial Day, they were outside and they had their uh, their hands over their hearts, and she muttered something under her breath, his breath, whatever you want to call it, and uh, you know said what all this because of like people who died or something like that. It was disrespectful to the country and veterans. That's what I expect from these people. But Mel Gibson's movie, The Patriot, right? Why would I want to trade one tyrant 3,000 miles away for 3,000 tyrants one mile away when a body of uh, Congress can easily crush a man's uh, rights as a monarchy can? Something like that, right? It already happened. It already happened because the moment that we allowed the lobbyists to come in, this country had the final nails and that and putting the coffin with the dirt sprinkled on top of it. There is no going back. Go ahead and try and defeat the military industrial complex. Go ahead and try and defeat the technological industrial complex, the pharmaceutical industrial complex, the intelligence industrial complex that is in everything. That's what Chuck Schumer said. You go it's, against the intelligence community and they'll come at you seven ways to Sunday. You you want me to tell you, Bob, why you can't have another American revolution and it work because prophecy has to be fulfilled. Absolutely. The new world order is being created in our very time frame of our lives right now. If people knew right now, yeah. If people knew the reason why they are flooding the United States with um, just immigrants from all over the world. If they knew why in God's eyes, remember, they see the acts, Moses knew his ways. Um, if they knew the ways, why? Because the globalists hate nationalism. God made nationalism. He made the nation of Israel. It was a nationalistic empire. Um, God made a person to be proud of their country. And these people, again, they want to violate the covenant covenant God made, covenant God made with uh, the people who landed Plymouth Rock and all that. They want to violate those covenants, and they want to destroy nationalism. This is why you can't have Russia. This is why you can't have it. Russia is a Christian empire. It's a Christian nation. I'm not saying everybody is Christian, um, but it's Christian. It's his fundamentals. Yeah, what did you say? Putin it's his fundamentals. For the, cast the chemical castration of pedophiles? Yeah, look, people, you know, here's the thing. Dumb people believe in, in the propaganda. They say that Putin is evil. Who cares? Let Putin be evil in Russia. Why does that hurt me here in America, especially here in Texas? All right. Hey, Putin uh, arrested a person who was running it, you know, against him. Oh, we should raise up arms. Hello, Joe Biden. Yeah. Should we should we have the same? Out, out, outrage and outburst because of your actions hold on how about this putin threatens to nuke the world why are we in ukraine i mean that would be like russia would be in mexico right so 
we we are we are poking the hornet's nest and then standing back and going hey i didn't do that you know yeah, poke the, the hornet's the, nest the, guy i didn't i i didn't do that moscow i don't know why the hornets had, are trying to stink moscow just had the largest attack on it um and you know i don't know how led long, by us yeah, don't, don't ever think it's not led by us I, I i don't know how many more times world peace can endure this um and they want to eliminate billions from the planet it's a death cult um hey l- let me ask you a question do you remember um do you remember what was it this was back in 2008 maybe 2009 the subway bombing the islamic terror yeah. bombing yeah. that was in mm-hmm. st petersburg it, is it strange that there hasn't been any other terror attacks since well isn't that strange if you know the nature of of of, you know what what happens to those people um oh the kgb the kgb went and found them yeah yeah them and everyone attached to them yeah they didn't they didn't get a second chance no we'll just say that I, Look, I, I'm, if you I'm, want, uh, let me let me say this real quick, and I'll give you the mic over. If you want, America's an empire. Don't deny it. America's an empire. We were an empire from the very beginning. We are an empire now. If you want to maintain control of your empire, then you cannot allow her, uh, heretics heresy. You cannot allow. Re- revolutions riots revolts you must maintain peace through strength and strength and peace you must maintain communication lines logistic lines you got to have a mobile military that is always constantly ready for fighting and that military has to be made with young men who are in shape and of fighting age typically and that is actually roman history would be from I mean, the ages you, of 18 you don't have to, to have it diverse with um People wearing multicolored flag rainbow stuff. You, you got to have, yeah, patriotism has to reflect the community. The community then has to reflect the the reason for the national pride. That does not mean anything racial at all. But borders are borders for a reason. America was great because we wouldn't allow Mexico to be a part of America. America is great because we wouldn't allow Canada to be a part of America. Now, Canada wants to be a part of America. Now, parts of Mexico want to be part of America. Hell, now parts of America don't want to be part of America anymore because they forgot what it meant to be an American. You know, if if you want an empire to survive, you've got to do what all empires do to survive. But because every empire has eventually fallen because of this one thing that we're doing right now, we too are going to fall. It's laughably predictable. It has to happen to bring in the global empire of the Antichrist. That's, that's why right. that's why nationalism has to be destroyed because they want global citizens. I mean, that is the verbiage they use all the time: global citizens, global consciousness, global responsibility. That, that that's the word that is used all the time. It's not national responsibility. It's not what John F. Kennedy said, you know, ask not what you can do for your country, but ask what you can do your country. Uh, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. It, it's not any of that anymore. It's global. And this is why having a knowledge of biblical understanding and proper bi- biblical understanding, this is why having a knowledge of eschatology, eschatology means the study of end times and things is, is, is necessary you can't have, excuse me if I offend, you can't have post-millennium, pre-terrorism, millennial um, views and have a proper understanding of the plan of God throughout history because there does come a time when it's consummated. There does come a time when the, the, there's a seven-year tribulation, according to the first 300 years, the, the, the founding fathers of the church. There, there does come a time when Jesus sets up a millennial kingdom on earth, an actual physical thousand-year millennial kingdom where he rules and reigns out of Jerusalem with a rod of iron, nobody's allowed to get away with all the junk anymore. There does come a time when, you know, that thousand years is up and there's just a great white throne judgment. There does come a time when we have eternity. Uh, That plays itself out. 
And what we're seeing right now is the very end of the end of the end of the man's dominion of this planet. We're seeing us go into this um, time of uh, great tribulation. This is all happening according to Bible prophecy. And this is, again, why having a proper perspective, it doesn't matter if you're a good moral person. Uh, it doesn't matter if you live right, treat you, don't kick your dog, you know, do, do all those things. If you don't have a proper biblical perspective of where we are at, then you do not understand the game plan. I mean, you don't understand which goalpost you're trying to run to. Oh, I'm going to, you know, just crossing the goalpost. I want to go that way, but you're supposed to be going that way. That That's not going to cut it. So having this proper responsibility and fathers, men, this means you step up to the plate. And this is really where it's failed. Um, we've become more of a matriarchal society than a patriarchal society. And I know everybody hates the patriarch, but that's the way God did it. Take it up with him. Um, men are to rule and lead their families. We pull the string, men. We don't push the string from the back. We don't put our wives up front and make them catch all the, you know, the, 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 the darts of the enemy. We're the ones that hold the shield of faith and protect our family from the darts of the enemy. Unless you have this proper perspective, then you do not know how to fight the battle. If you think an AR-15 can fight the battle, then you're just going to end up like one of the January 6th people because Rome, the United States, loves to fight those people. We love it. We've done, we've done it all whole, the time of our country. We've done it. Yep. And we're successful at it. Yeah, uh, but, but Rome doesn't know how to fight the gospel of Jesus Christ. It can't do it. The, the, the powers of hell cannot prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. So if you're, if you are promoting and serving the kingdom of God, the church, the, the world does not know how it can, it can hurt you. It can kill you. It can do all kinds of things, but through it all, the church prevails. The church prevails. Let and, me ask you something. Let me ask something, Bob. Do you know how symbolic it would be if you had teleco planes how many different kinds of churches you got in Teleco Plains? Probably just as many as we do. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know, but you know, we got the main ones, all the main ones. Methodist, yeah. Baptist. We even have a Catholic church. Um, you know, we have a couple of Presbyterian churches. Um, you know, Jehovah. Well, Witness. I, yeah, I, I know what I know in mine. We got uh, Jehovah Witness. Uh, we got you know Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran. Uh, we got Pentecostal, of course, it's Texas. We got Pentecostal and Baptist. Yes. Um, you know, we, we got all the flavors of the ice cream bar for Christian religiosity. Could you imagine having each church show up that I mean the entire congregation for every single church show up and actually pray together or, or Could really, you, you know, the conversion experience itself. I can't tell you how many churches you see on their billboard. You know, they had vacation Bible school. Ten kids gave their heart to Jesus. No, they didn't. You're lying. They didn't. Because you got, you, you've got you got to make disciples. And some child that you've emotionally manipulated, you can mano you could man emotionally manipulate that child to think it's transgender. You can emotionally manipulate that child to think it's, oh, yeah, I, I, I went up and checked the box. I, I'm, I'm this. It takes discipleship. It takes training, train up a child in the way they will go it, over and over and over again. The Bible in Joshua, it says, you know, it's our job to put the law of God before their eyes continuously. That then you produce a Christian uh, getting some child who's eight years old in emotion. You don't want to go to hell, do you? You want to accept Jesus, don't you? And, 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 and oh, he gave his life to the Lord but his whole life never reflects it. You didn't do anything but deceive that child. You deceived him. You made him harder to reach for Christ than if he'd, ne if he'd never done that. Because now the child thinks, I was told I'm going to heaven. I was told I checked the box. This is, this is the, the, the crux of Christianity. We make disciples of people who follow, people who are obedient, people who love the Lord, people who seek him, people who walk with him, people who read their Bible, you know, that's what it is. And you can't do that to an eight-year-old. Now, you can get an eight-year-old on the road, and he, I, I think an eight-year-old can make a commitment to Jesus, but you have to follow through with it. 
and just having it done on a vacation Bible school, you know, where they check the box and then, you know, send them to Sunday school where they're shown these, you know, pictures of um, happy giraffes sticking their head out of the ark, but never teaching them what the ark means, the judgment it means, the judgment it represents, how it grieved the heart of God that he made man and he had to destroy them all. We never tell them that side of the story. This is where it's a call back to first century Christianity. That's what Paul told in the book of Revelation. I mean, uh, John, John through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit revealed to John, you know, the church of Ephesus, you've left your first love. You've left your first love. And, 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 and in the end times, the Laodicean church is the proud church. Listen, we've got everything. We've got money, power, prestige. I know the president. I got the president's ear. That doesn't mean anything. That's a Laodicean church that Jesus says, I want to spit you out of my mouth. I want to vomit you out. But then there was the Philadelphia church that was known for their passion and love for Jesus. There was not one rebuke given to that church, and, and, but it was small. I know your numbers are few, but stay faithful to the end and you will inherit the crown of life. That's what it is. And that's why, you know, in, in the book of Daniel, it says there comes a time when the Antichrist overcomes the saints of the Most High. Now, there's, there could be rough subject for interpretation. I definitely think it means physically overcome them, overcomes and persecutes like probably the world has never seen persecution before against the saints of the Most High. But in some ways, we've seen through temptation and deception, the love of the flesh, the love of the world, the love of the pride of life, all that. He's overcome them spiritually, too, and we see that throughout the church today. I mean, I was watching, um, who's the female singer? Uh, Taylor Swift. You know, she was, I'm a Christian. And, you know, standing up against, because she was railing against Martha Blackburn and um, the, the governor uh, at the time this video was made. You know, how dare they? It's not Christian to, to be anti-LGBQ. It's not Christian to not do this. It's not... Where does she get her theology from? Obviously not the Bible, but this is the this is the whole thing with the church. She said she was raised in the church. I, I would guess probably coming from Tennessee, a Baptist church. Um, but where what pastor taught her theology? What, you know, she probably gave her life to Jesus at a uh, you know vacation Bible school. I'm I'm just hypothesizing here, but look look at the out result. It, there was no life change. There was no discipleship. There, there was nothing that happened that that said you. It, it, this is not just saying a few words, waving the magic wand of Jesus over somebody and having them, you know, converted for the rest of their life. It, bad theology, bad life, bad whatever. This means forming yourself that Christ may be formed in me, that I may become more like Him. This is what that means, and this is the call of Jesus. Uh, Doug, I think there are millions, especially in the United States, that, that are going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you workers of iniquity. He didn't say you didn't check the box. Depart from me, you those eight-year-olds, you didn't check the box at Vacation Bible School. He didn't say that. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity because they've never been taught repentance. They've never been taught discipleship. And because of that, um, they've been fooled, tricked, deceived into thinking that they are Christian when they're not. You know, you can say you're a Christian and then come out and say, I'm LGBTQ friendly, I'm this friendly, I'm that friendly. I'm not saying we hate LGBTQ people. Um, you know, there's many of them that have come to Jesus. I'm not saying we hate that murderer. Uh, Paul was a murderer. But we preach the gospel. We live the life of Christianity. You know, <clears throat> you just take the laws in the Bible. And, and I know I'm going to get people mad at me for saying this. Um, what, what did Jesus say about marriage? You know, there's only one cause for divorce. Now, Paul maybe gave another one, uh, abandonment. But adultery but the church condones and sanctions divorce for anything today and remarriage and i'm not saying it the bible says it, it says if you remarry a divorced person you commit adultery where where 
why don't we enforce those words? You know, if the Church of Jesus Christ enforced those words, people would work their marriages out. We know there's a standard. You know, when you take go into the military, there's a standard. You swear allegiance to the Constitution. You, you say you'll obey your commander-in-chief. You make, uh, there's what, what do they call it, the... I don't know, Doug, you in the military, the, the soldier's guide, the, your rules and regulations. That's what the Bible is. So when, when Jesus was talking about marriage, which is never talked about, uh, that's that's the marching orders. That's your, what, general orders? Is that what they're called, the general orders? Um, in general orders. Yeah, the, gen, your general orders. This is what you do. Can you be a faithful soldier in the United States military and disobey all your general orders and do it continuously? I'm not saying, you know, I, you know, I'm like, don't fall asleep while you're on guard duty. I imagine quite a few people have fallen asleep on guard duty, you know, but it's not something we just practice. We know it's wrong. We try to oppose it. Sometimes we might fail because we get tired and things happen. But at that point, we're convicted. We have a, a brokenness. Lord, I, I violated this. It grieves my heart, Lord. I repent. Please forgive me. I want to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's that's the nature of a Christian. It's not a Christian who can go to church on Sunday and then, you know, go out and live like hell the rest of the week, have no biblical principle, no Bible in their life, no evidence of it in their marriage, their children, their family, their work ethic, nothing. But I checked a box when I was eight years old. That's why I, I fear that there's many in the church today that go to church that will hear those words depart from me you workers of iniquity and listen you know i can see my picture right there on the on the thing i'm looking at a sinner not you doug me you know <laughs> and i'm looking at a sinner with you too so i'm saying i know um what did rc sproul say you know preaching the gospel is one sinner teaching another sinner where to get bread you know that that's where it's at the bread the bread, the words of life. What did Jesus say? Lord, will you abandon me also? That's what Jesus said. And he said, Lord, where else will we go? Only you have the words of eternal life. Only you have the words of eternal life. So um, I didn't mean to get off on this rant, but we're going to see flattery. We're going to see deception. We're going to see just every evil, Romans 1, no, every evil is going to overtake mankind. We see it happening that they'll think it's right. They'll put you to death because what do you mean? I can't cut the penis off a child and make it a girl. Well, you can't do that. It's the chromosome thing. It's you're going to have emasculated boy is what you're going to have. It's not going to be How come no one's tried that on their dog? Well, <laughs> I want you to go try it on a bull. You know? Oh, yeah. As, as as we say in the South, if you can get some bull milk out of that out of that bull, I'll give you an ounce of gold. Yeah. I mean, I, I want you to go try to, you know, cut a bull's thing off and see what happens to you. Um, you know, but this is where this is why we're at where we're at. I don't think it's re redeemable, but here's the thing. Body, soul, and spirit, you can God redeem your body? Absolutely. Ultimately, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, <clears throat> the dead in Christ will rise. So if you're dead, you're going to rise Two, those who are alive at the time will be caught up to be with the Lord. All of a sudden, you know, whether it's fake or not, I, I, I kind of think it's real. The Shroud of Turin, that burst of light comes in our body and transforms us in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Boom. Changed. Boom. We have immortality. We're there. So our body can be redeemed. Our soul, that means, you know, who God made us, our personality and all that doesn't change in heaven. That's going to be redeemed. So, you know, I love to create. I'm, I'm an artist at heart. I love creating stuff. It doesn't mean Bob Gers won't be an artist anymore, but he's going to have, he won't be entangled by the, by the, the trappings and the evil of this world when he wants to create. And then my spirit, I'll be able to stand before God almighty. Just think of that. I'll stand before my father and my father is going to come up to me. And, and I know I've had tears 
you know, he's going to wipe the tears from my eyes. So I'll be redeemed body, soul, and spirit. You know, that's what we're promised, but only if you're redeemed. And um, like I said, I, I don't mean to preach to people, but we're watching this world that people put so much, um, so much in time and investment into that's going to be redeemed. You know, I, I think of my friend, Steve Quayle. For years, he's told people to get away from a fiat currency and to get gold. Now, the Bible actually talks about gold. I mean, obviously, it's important because the streets in the New Jerusalem are paved with it. But we want to trust in fiat currencies. And we know eventually it's all going to go to pot, lose its value, all of it. Um, but what God made, gold, I don't care what they do, gold's never going to lose its value. People will always want it. Uh, and, and you could use that as an analogy. You know, there is this paper money gospel. There is this fiat gospel that doesn't require anything. I can turn the printing presses on and make all kinds of hundred dollar bills. Takes very little to do it. But when you have to go mine gold, you have to refine it and do all the processes that it takes. That's a whole lot of difference. And I would say today, most churches preach paper money Christianity. Would you agree with that, Doug? Yep. I would probably say worse things about it, but yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. They pe preach paper money gospel. There's nothing of value to it. It's, it's only valuable because you think it's valuable. It doesn't mean that Jesus thinks it's valuable. Depart from me. Many, I never knew you. Many churches are teaching a false sense of salvation. Absolutely. And if your church is teaching that you can check a box and become a Christian, there, it does, there is a time, I want to make it clear, there is a time when you commit your life to Jesus Christ. But at that time, there's repentance, conversion, and there's discipleship. It happens. If you can do, if you can say I'm a Christian and not change, depart from me. I'm, I'm, well, it, does, yeah. it, it doesn't just happen one Sunday, at, you know, morning, no. afternoon, you showed up. It, like me, it takes time. Um, it takes it takes a while. You you develop and you grow into Christian maturity. Once again, I I feel like I've become a man twice. Yes. Um, you know, here's the thing. Here's what's so dangerous about this. We're getting a little long in the tooth on this discussion, but that's fine. The dangerous thing is that Revelation twelve and thirteen will teach you about the Antichrist and his coming kingdom, and that everyone. If you do not take the mark, everyone will bow down and worship the beast. Absolutely. Everyone. Everyone. Do you think every Christian will take the mark? Every true follower of Jesus. Jesus said, I'm not going to lose any of my own. The problem yeah. is there's many that are deceived into thinking I checked the box. They will take it. Um, and they'll lose their soul. Their soul will be eternally damned. Um, the ones that are truly have made Jesus their Lord will stand. He, Jesus will give them the power to stand, but you know, well, that's, that's the scary thing about it, Bob. The scary thing about it is that when the church is being led by the wolf in sheep's clothing, I hate that analogy that some people really askew. They, they, they take it and they make it into like a wolf is like the evil, bad character. It's talking about people. Yes. People, deceptive, deceiving, carnivorous people that prey upon you. They, they love to talk about Jesus as long as you give me your thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, oh. th this is the thing. You know, the reason I talk so much about my faith or the faith, I will say the faith, the faith of our fathers, is because when we talk about the oil crisis, when we talk about the food crisis, when we talk about the drug crisis, pharmacia, when we talk about war, the only way to properly understand all of these things is through the biblical truth of God's word. I can put it, I can process it. My brain can process it through God's word. I can see the signs coming to pass. Jesus said, when you see these things happen, you'll know that summer is near. He goes, I, I tell you these things that you be not deceived. So this is why I promote 
the biblical perspective so much and so strongly is because you will not understand Maui. You will not understand Ukraine. You will not understand all of this stuff, the, 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 the transgenderism, the pedophilia. You won't understand that. Why will they destroy fertilizer, which means we can't make that much food? Why? Well, if, if well, you the, don't have a biblical understanding, you, you won't have the proper perspective. A, a lot of these things, what you're what you're talking about, you know, the oil crisis, the food crisis, the Bible's already explained how you overcome those crises. There was a story in the Bible about a woman and her child. A man came and said, woman, feed me. She said, well, we only have so much flour. We only have so much oil. Well, amazing through her faith, she fed the man and her oil never ran out. Yes. You know, there's another story where Jesus fed the masses and all they had was a few loaves of bread and a few fish. You know, what's, what's funny that these stories all have to do with faith, faith. And, you know, here's the thing, Bob, funny thing about faith. And I learned this a very hard way. Don't do as Doug did. Um, when you push God to see what is the extension of your mercy upon myself, God will show you. You can either do it the easy way or you can do it the hard that's, way. That's if you want. what he, he told Paul. It's hard for you to kick against the thorns. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I've been in my garden before and sometimes I've gone out there barefooted and I have a chestnut tree. And anybody knows about chestnut trees, the shell is spiny and those yep. spines are hard. And I've accidentally stepped on a chestnut husk before and you get those spines to stick in your feet and they do have a little toxin in them. And boy, oh boy, it hurts. It hurts. You know, it's hard to do that. It's not any fun. Yep. Um, so if you're gonna, I, I if you're would gonna be dumb, you, you better be tough. Yeah. You know, Noah and Joseph are, you know, this is why we tell people to physically prepare. There's examples in the Bible, specifically judgment, harsh, harsh, harsh judgment is coming guys. Joseph, Noah, it's coming. It's going to be wicked judgment, harsh judgment, prepare for it, store some food, do this, do that. That's why I'm a prepper. Because not because I just want to preserve my life to preserve my life, but obviously God wanted to preserve Noah's life. Obviously God wanted to preserve Joseph's life. Uh, when you see Jerusalem surrounded about by armies, flee. He wanted to preserve those people's lives. That's why I do what I do in the physical realm. When I do what I do in the spiritual realm is because something far more valuable than what I see when I look in this camera, me, is at stake and that's what's inside of me my spiritual man you know i want that man to be preserved i want that man to stand before the lord jesus christ and hear those words well done a good and faithful servant um so with that said you know we want to preserve body soul and spirit that's where it's at you know doug i'm going to switch gears a little bit right now you know i just see violence filling our society in every way. I mean, I can't think of any greater violence than to emasculate children, but I see violence against women. I see violence against innocent people. I see violence against the elderly. I see mass violence, you know, I mean, that guy, I want to strangle that little girl, uh, violence. Um, you know, I, I'm, I have a brother here that I'm looking at, Doug, who has had some of the best training people can get concerning how to deal with that violence to protect innocent life. You know, how can I be a man? How can I be a man and see innocent life being hurt? Like if, if I, if I saw that creature strangling that 11 year old girl and I said, well, I'm supposed to love him and not do anything. And, you know, uh, no, I would have one course of action for that thing. It wouldn't have made it to court. And I would have saved that little girl. If, if I'm in a mall or a school, I can't do it in a school, but it should be allowed in a school. But if I'm in a mall or a church or something like that, and somebody wants to take the lives of innocent people, I am to be trained in that manner. I mean, 
you know, Moses was a warrior. David was a warrior. All the men of these, all these men of God in the Bible were warriors. And Doug is a warrior. Um, and, and we're offering a course in October eighth. What was it? What is it, Doug? The dates, um, sixth, seventh and eighth, sixth, seventh and eighth, you know, where you can be trained to be a warrior in the physical nature. Now this doesn't negate the fact that you obviously, and most definitely need to become a spiritual warrior. So you oh, you'll get that there too. Yeah. Yeah. We did. I mean, I, I, uh, I remember many of the guys that were there and the women said, this was like a Christian men's retreat on steroids, you know? Um, you, you will, you're going to be encouraged in, in, in our spiritual man, but you know, how to become a warrior to protect your family because the ravenous beasts are out there and they're gathering and they hate you, especially if you're Christian, they hate you. Um, and how to train yourself to, to defend your lo innocent life, whether it's your family or some other innocent life, like that little 11 month old girl. You know, how to defend life. If, if there's an active shooter, how to defend life and protect life. So in, uh, in October, we're going to be offering that active shooter class. And not only that, but there's all kinds of bonus things you get during that class. We have Steve Rise, who's a, a Green Beret combat medic. He's going to be teaching advanced medical techniques. Um, he's also um, a, a sir, uh, sir, um, sir, seer instructor. Yeah, seer instructor, excuse me. Um, and you're going to get all kinds of good things along those lines. I will be talking a little bit about radio um, and how to use radio effectively to, to form groups and to network with people because, you know, good people need to network and be strong together. Um, and you can sign up for this course for fractions of what you'd pay somebody else to do it. I cannot more. And, and, and on, on top of that, you're supporting our brother here. You're, you're supporting his family. I'm, what do you got five children, Doug? Yep. Yeah. So you're supporting his five children. Um, and, and it's a good work. You'll walk away from this spiritually enriched and mentally and physically enriched. And so I encourage people to sign up for this class. You can go to readymaderesources.com across the top of the screen. Doug, can you pull that up and show them what to click? Um, and you can click that and it'll take you right to the course and, and sign up for it. And you're going to come out to our place and enjoy Eastern Tennessee in the fall, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, right, and there's, there, right there. there. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's plenty of bed and breakfast. There's yeah. plenty of cabins. 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 Uh, you, you'll be able to camp on site. Uh, we typically get together at night, do like a, a bonfire get together. We got to do that the first time, not so much the second time because we got rained out, but you know, this time we'll be doing that. Uh, we'd like to try and go and eat as a group um, as many times as possible. You know, I, with every training evolution, I have gained more friends. Yes. For me as the, as the lead instructor, I've gained more friends every time. It's, it's not about the cool guy status. And look, here's the thing. What I'm trying to teach you is very simple, very basic. You're not going to be a special forces, Navy SEAL, you know, the sniper machine afterwards, but you're going to know how to walk through your home, your doorway, your hallways confidently and not die in them because most likely that's where the fight's going to happen at. And you can take that element of knowledge and apply it anywhere you go because anywhere you go, there's going to be hallways, doorways, corners, vehicles, and people. And that's what we're going to be working on. We're going to be doing a lot of shoot, don't shoot exercises, de-escalation and escalation exercises, when to do things and when not to do things, how to use your voice to de-escalate. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of shooting. I mean, a lot of shooting. And it's all airsoft. And there are no cardboard targets because you're the target. I'm going to make you and, and whoever's standing in front of you be each other's targets. It's airsoft. It doesn't hurt. But things change when your target can shoot back at you and can move or produces a knife or some sort of a melee instrument 
to try and smash your brains in, I'm going to make you think, which is what you're not going to get on a flat range. If you want to get pinpoint sub MOA accuracy, go to those guys. If you want to get use of force training as law enforcement officers did, which is, you know, it's, it's not our marksmanship that gets us thrown in prison. It's how we don't know how to employ ourselves and law enforcement that gets us either killed or thrown in prison. So I'm going to teach you how to do two things, how to survive and how to employ yourself successfully so you can be an asset and not a liability. Bob, we've had two courses, just two, and both times we got about 15 people for a class that can hold 24 people. We got 15 people. Now, this will be the sixth course we've tried to put on, and we've been able to put on two because the other four – we couldn't get people to show up for all different kinds of reasons. And I don't care to get into it. We couldn't get people to show up. But right now we have three people signed up. It's in October 6th, 7th, and 8th. If you'd like to sign up, please go to Ready Made Resources. It's $850 for 30 hours of training, three 10 hour days. I promise you, I will not fail you. And if you want to call and talk to me about the class and ask me specifics, you know, you can get me at 800-627-3809. Call me up. I'll, I'll go over more of the specifics of the class. But, you know, it helps to be in shape. Um, yeah, right there. Take a course of ready-made resources. It helps to be in shape, and I would encourage that. I encourage that no matter what. Um, get in shape. Um, I think you're going to need it to, yeah, the active shooter course right there. Um, you click it, you can sign up for it. But um, it doesn't matter how old you are, um, you know, if you if you do have some physical liabilities, we can work through that. Yeah. And um, you will walk away from this class much better and spiritually enriched. Um, and Bob, we, we had people who have attended this class twice and who are talking about attending it. A third time, uh, Ethan, he was the youngest guy yes, there. I remember him and his, yeah. him and his beautiful family. Um, and then we had uh, Don, uh, old man Don Popeye. He showed up. He's in what is mid 60s, late 60s out there, you know, getting it with the best of us. We had a woman show up who was in her, uh, I think, late 60s, early 70s, showed up just so that she can understand what we're talking about and saw for it herself face-to-face, -face, never complained, never griped, and went through every single drill, and she survived. So if a woman in her 70s can survive this training, gentlemen, in your 20s and 30s, what's your excuse? Yes. What is your excuse? Uh, look, if you've got my training and you don't uh, already, if you know what I know and you don't want to come, that's great. If you know what I know and you want to, you know, um, you want to scrub the rust off that barrel, and you want to get some more training in, you want to get some more reps in, come out, guys. So I promise you, training is always evolving. You're going to learn something new. If anything, you're going to just bust the rust, which is always helpful. Um, you know, for anyone who doesn't have any type of training at all, do not, and I, this is just Doug's opinion, don't listen to me, all right? But my personal opinion is do not be the guy who says, man, if only I had taken that training, I would have known how to put a pressure bandage on, a, a tourniquet on, how to make a hasty pressure bandage or a hasty tourniquet off of pieces of clothing and things around me. If only I knew how to actually pie around a door or a corner. If only I knew how to actually dominate a hallway like in my room or in my house whenever someone breaks in. You know, when, when you have to rely upon the only skills that you have and you have no training at all, that could be a very, very bad day. And statistics prove it's not very encouraging to look at the body count afterwards from a mass active shooter or from a home burglary. You know, yeah. speed and reaction time has to be worked on and it and will work on you. You know, I mean, trust me, if I got to ensure that you know how to walk through a doorway and make you do it a hundred times until you're confident with it and then move to the next thing and build upon you. That's what we'll do. If you want to do 10 hours of training. Okay. And I offer this to anybody. If you want to do 10 hours of training the first, second, and third day. And then afterwards you say, Hey, Doug, 
Can you work with me about 10, 15 more minutes, 30 minutes, an hour afterwards? That's what we were doing the whole time, Bob. We didn't go to sleep until two in the morning. Well, I we mean, did. there was a lot of after action discussion. A lot, a lot. And and this is what I'm saying. You know, we, we try to foster a Christian atmosphere in it. Um, where we, we talk about lethal defense. We talk about just, you know, non-lethal defense from a Christian perspective. And, but, you know, we, we do. Now, I, I'll tell you, if you're somebody who likes to shoot paper, and I do, I like to shoot steel, I like to shoot paper. Doug, we had to do a video where I walk up to that paper target and it attacks me, you know, fighting that paper target, that cardboard piece of target. You know, it doesn't do that, does it? No. I it, wish. It's, it's like watching a Bruce Lee video and thinking you're going to become a black belt. Um, you know, I know a lot of people who watch a lot of, uh, you know, you can get them from all the karate discount houses, videos on how to become the next Hoist Gracie. Um, and, but they never go out and they, it's never El Mano on an El Mano. They never get in the ring and get down and grapple with each other and, and know what it's like to get choked out or get into a pressure hold or something like that. They never do it. Um, they never learn how to lick through their wounds. I mean, you know, I might get hurt in the fight. But, you know, I'll lick the wound after the fight. You know, I'm going to fight through the pain and take care of business and then do that. You know, if if you're in a martial arts class, you know, you can talk all you want about sparring. But until you spar, you just don't know what it's like. And unless you go to a class where people do <laughs> shoot back and you know what it's like, it's like you, you'll feel a little ping when that, that little BB hits you, those little green BBs. Um, you'll feel a little ping, but you, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking that could be a nine millimeter. That could be a two, two, three, um, five, five, six, three, oh, eight, whatever you want to call it, even a 22. Um, and all of a you'll sudden be it, brings amazed. A, it brings a new reality to it. You'll um, be amazed at how accurate people are from under 20 feet and who have very little skill at all, which is a confidence booster for a lot of people. But it, what it should do is it should wake you up to the fact that you're as good as the guy typically shooting at you. Probably better because a lot of those people have never trained, but I've never had a steel target when I've hit it run back at me and, you know, sling at me in the head with that piece of round steel, or I've never had a paper target with a bad guy holding a hostage with a gun ever come and attack me. And if that's the level of your training, you don't know what it's like to have somebody to feel that ping of that little BB hitting you, which could be a nine millimeter or five, five, six. Um, yep. and, and that's the importance of doing it because it puts a whole new perspective on doing that. I mean, when the military back in the eighties introduced miles gear, uh, it was these little sensors you had all over your body. And it was like, when that, sense, when that sensor went off though, I know I talked to people there and said, I'm dead. You know, I got hit. I'm dead. Um, and you know, there was just lasers and stuff like that they were using. But so when you're in that situation and you realize carelessness can kill you very easily, you know, you take on a whole new dimension when I, I know I was training at another training camp one time. And I remember I saw the guy down there. I got functionally fixated on the guy at my 12 o'clock and I never saw the flanking guy come until it was too late. And then it was boom, boom, boom. Bob was dead. Um, I'll tell you, I've never forgotten that lesson. I've never forgotten it, but I would not, you know, I could have been in a class and somebody could have drawn pictures on the chalkboard and said this, but you know, that wasn't real. It was real when Bob Griswold got shot, you know, and it was like, okay, now you're dead. You're not going home tonight. You're not going to see your wife anymore. Your kids are gone. You know, you're not going to be there. So when you get in that kind of training where you all of a sudden get put in situations where you actually learn through pain and not much pain, but you know, you get, you get the ping. Um, it, it's a, it's a level of mental training that you're not going to get in any other manner. And so, uh, again, not to, not to belabor this, but you really need to have this kind of training, um, now because our society yeah. is getting more and more violent and the odds of and you I, getting into violence are getting greater and greater every day. And I would say that paintball hurts way worse than, than the airsoft yes. does. Yes. I've been hit with both. Um, yeah, it's it, it look it, it just what it does is it gets your attention. Yeah. Um now if we're really close, yeah, it hurts. 
Yeah. If you, um, didn't, if you didn't have, I know you want them to wear a long sleeve shirt and padding. Now, if there's you had, always you know, there, safety is paramount. There's always a safe amount of distance between a, a role player and one of the students. Um, yeah. That's safety is always paramount. There's well, no. You bring, no. you bring neck protectors. You bring a f- complete face shield. So, yep, I bring everything. So, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get hurt in any substantial way. Your your neck and face are going to be completely protected. But uh, again, it goes back to the realism of it and realizing, you know, I've got to do better. I've got to be I got to be the guy who goes home at night and not the guy who gets shot. And so it'll teach you to be it'll teach you to be faster out of the holster. Yes. So uh, again, um, we have room in the class. You'll love it. We have good fellowship. And um, I encourage you strongly to sign up for it. Doug, I want to mention one thing too. Um, For Labor Day, which is coming up, our our supplier really has put together a fantastic night vision package where you're getting basically the night vision for just a little bit more than you'd pay for just the night vision. But you're also going to get a Wilcox G11 mount, which is about a $500 item. You're going to get a J-Arm, which is a $200 item. You're going to get a helmet, which is a $200 item. You're going to get all that thrown in so that you're good to go with the night vision, the all the mounting helmet, all of it uh, for just a little bit more than the night vision would cost. And these are L3 units they are unfilmed. That That's everybody liked my unfilmed unit when you brought them out here doing walking. And that's the other thing you're going to get to do when you do the class. We're going to take people out at night and look, let them look through thermal and night vision so they can appreciate what it does for you. But we have this on sale during Labor Day. I was offered this from my supplier. So you're going to get a, a top premium grade night vision. We've talked about how night visions like cars, you can buy, you know, slow, bad ones, and you can buy really souped up hot ones. This is like, you know, the souped up hot one. Um, and you're going to get the helmet. You're going to get the mount for it. Uh, Wilcox, which allows you to flip it up and down. Um, you're going to get all that. Uh, for the price of just the night vision and we do offer financing uh so if you can't you know shell out the, the money all at once because night vision is expensive it's in the three to four thousand dollar price range um you, you can break it up where it's about 150 a month payment and uh, we offer that that'll be going on during the labor day weekend so it starts tomorrow and goes through the weekend um you know um, and on monday uh, you can get in touch with me about this at 800-627-3809. And I will tell you in the, in the physical realm, it would be a hard choice, but I would ra- rather have night vision or a gun. I think I would rather have the night vision uh, because I could acquire battlefield acquisitions as they call them with night vision pretty easily. It gives me such an advantage. Now I'd want, I'd want both, but um, night vision gives you such an advantage over the people without it. And I, and I don't think there's a soul listening right now that doesn't realize that United States is headed for a complete moral and physical collapse, uh, possible invasion uh, from foreign powers, even though we've already been thoroughly invaded. Um, the saboteurs are everywhere. And when, when it does break down and, and goes bad, you look at Maui and figure that's going to happen nationwide. Um, fire is very indiscriminate, and it's easy to start a fire and catch a neighborhood on fire. Um, just remember that that night vision will be a, a, a tool that saves your life. Um, and like I said, we do offer financing on it for those of you who are on a budget. Um, you know, we have thousands of other products and I'll be glad to talk with you, help you format a plan, according to your budget and your geographic location. Uh, for you to uh, get the uh, equipment you need. But Doug, I, I don't think there was anybody at the class last time who looked through that set of nods and looked through that thermal unit that wasn't like, oh my gosh, look at this. I mean, you can't hide from it. You can't hide. So Yeah, it's it, it's a game changer. Um, and you know, this is what it comes down to, having good gear, good clothing, good boots, you know, good, good having, training, good training, ha- having good training, not having cheap gear, cheap rifles, cheap, this cheap, that if you think that you can, you know, buy your doomsday equipment off of Amazon prime, um, well, good luck. I hope it works out for you. It might. Um, but there's a reason why the government doesn't and why the military doesn't and why law enforcement doesn't, we buy the best that we can afford. And that's, you know, that's for anything, anyone, 
Um, we know our, our community. We're not talking to the millionaires and billionaires because they hire guys like us to protect them. You don't have that. All you have is you and all your family has is you. So be the best you that you can give to your family. Don't be a liability, be an asset. If you're a drunk, you're a liability. If you're an open center, you're a liability. If you're on drugs, you're a liability. You're out of shape. Now, uh, granted, there are people that have physical disabilities, and God will protect you in the manner that he protects the innocent or the or the, uh, the people who cannot do it themselves. You know, uh, if you know David and Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was Saul's son who had a club foot. He was he was disabled in that manner. And so, and uh, uh, David took him in and made him like his own son. Um, he, he sent a protector for him. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you have the ability to get in shape and don't do it and eat, eat the bad diet and all the extra weight and all that, it's going to be a grave hindrance to you. I remember, gosh, gosh, almost 25 years ago when I got back into martial arts, I did it as a kid. I got back into it. I went there the dojo and study. And I, I knew a lot of the, still a lot of the techniques, but you know what? I puked because I, I got into a sparring thing and I wasn't used to that level of physical thing. And the dojo was hot. They didn't air condition it. And I got, I, I mean, I, I hurled because I just wasn't used to it. Um, that level of physical exertion. Um, and, you know, but as I trained, I got, I got really good again. You know, I could go and fight and fight and fight and fight. I, you know, go out and run for two hours without stopping, you know, just run. And I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't born with a big S on my chest, you know, but you know, I, I worked and worked and worked at it to where I could get there. Um, and I'll, I'll tell people, people know that I'm, I, I do have a cancer, but even today I went to the gym and I do work out my legs. I work out my, I do bench presses and curls and stuff like that. You know, you know God's being good to me and my cancer is, I'm having good results with the treatments, but I have to be proactive in it. And, you know, one of the things that, 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 you know, when you're working out, cancer loves sugar. Well, when I'm working my muscles out, my muscles are eating up a lot of that sugar that cancer might get. Um, and I ask people to pray for me too. You know, I want to be around. So I ask people to pray for me, but it ha it's hindered me in some ways, but I haven't made excuses for it and I've worked through it. Um, and, and that's what I just encourage people to do. So you can't say I have this, 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 this disability, work through it, get in shape because, you know, if, if you got a bunch of bad guys coming at you, uh, believe me, physical prowess is going to mean a lot. Um, you know, and that's what I just encourage. So if you've got a drug dependency, um, you know, deal with it, start, you know, there's, there's programs where you can start to curb yourself off of it. If you're addicted to alcohol, same thing. Smoking, same thing. Um, I don't make light of these addictions. I know they're very tough addictions, but you know, get off of it by the power of Jesus Christ. You can do it and, and, and start doing those physical things so that you will be able to protect your family. Because as I, as I said, there are a lot of people that hate you out there. Uh, Keith Green, uh, the singer of the 80s who died in a plane crash, he wrote a song for Josiah. Uh, that was one of his sons who died in a plane crash. You know, um, you know, you were born in a world that hates you. If you have never listened to the song, you can go on YouTube and listen to it. Keith Green song for Josiah. Um, but Keith, then Keith said, but in the song, I will swear I will never forsake you. You know, and that's the father towards his son. That's the God, the father towards you. You know, you were born in a world that hates you, but I will never forsake you. And so um, I just encourage you to take this training, get prepared. I mean, I, I like it when people buy stuff from me. That's how I support my family. I, I make no bones about it. It was a mission I think God gave me. But no matter what you do, even if you get on a Walmart and buy packages of tuna, you know, get prepared with food, get prepared with being able to do clean water. You, you look at the, the water that the USG provided the residents of Maui. It was making them sick. We talked about that. You know, if, if, if they had, you know, if they'd had a five gallon bucket or a liter with something to put the water in and gone home and run it through a Berkey, you know, it wouldn't have made them sick. Um, so we, you can't 
we did that in the last program. You can't rely on the government because the government's proven it's completely unreliable when it comes to disaster, even on their best day. Um, you know, you, the things that you need to do to prepare physically right now are just absolutely critical that you do them. Um, and training is that thing that you need, really need to do. So, Doug, I, that's I've said my piece, and um, I, I just pray that people get this vision, you know, they get the vision of the kingdom of God. They get the vision of men. Men get the vision of you, the leader of your family. I'm the leader, protector, provider of my family. I'm the man who my children see reading the Bible. I'm the man who I talk to him. You know, when, when decisions come for the family, the, the man, God would want us to do this. You know, just something really neat happened. My wife's the fourth damn black belt. And I didn't know this, but I was praying for, it was late at night and I'd gotten up and was praying. And I, I just came to him and I said, "Hun, you know, we agreed on so many days that you could tr train. I said, I just feel like you're supposed to train more with your sparring. And little did I know a day later that, that I, we found out that the, her school's going to be in a tournament where she's going to have to spar. God spoke to me about that. So we could put a lot more time for her, a, a lot more time for her to train. Um, and, and she was like, she came to me and said, you know, honey, this is amazing. God spoke to you this. He actually said this because you didn't know about this, this tournament. You didn't know what I was going to have to fight. You didn't know I was going to do this. And, it, you know, I was Mr. Good guy in her eyes, you know, because I, I'd spent time praying for her and hearing God, what God had to say. And she so appreciated that. Um, and, and that's the benefit of what we get. My children, my wife see me praying. My children, my wife see me reading God's word. And my children and wife seeing me also be a man, standing up for truth, standing up for righteousness, protecting them, providing for them. Men, let's, let's do our what God has assigned us to do. That is to become the warrior priest. You know, um, weakness is not a strength. Strength is not a weakness. So I, I highly advise everyone to become stronger in their faith, stronger in their bodies, and stronger in their will, uh, because you're going to need it for what's yep. coming. What did Jordan uh, Peterson say? A gentle man is not a good man. A good man is a strong man, a man who can commit violence if he needs to, but he has it under voluntary control. That's a good man. Yeah, I... Uh, I think the quality of a good man will soon be tested, but you know what, what I'm going to be teaching you is defense, not offense defense and the best defense against evil men are good men who are skilled at violence. So if you're not skilled at it, if you have questions about it, if you feel uncomfortable with your lack of understanding of how to operate a weapon system and protect yourself and your family, come pay us a visit, man. Amen. You know, uh, sponsor somebody if you want uh, if you want to sponsor a young man or a young family to come out and get this training if you got teenagers bring them out you know um this is, this is what i'll tell you come as you are come with whatever skill level you got whatever problems you got you know if if you need deliverance while you're there maybe we can pray over and give you deliverance if you need prayer while you're there we'll pray for you if you need fellowship we'll fellowship with you that's what we're all going to be doing anyways and we're going to be training you know so um time's growing short bob thanks for coming on today god bless doug i enjoyed this so much god bless you brother ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for listening uh please like share subscribe send this out to people all that good stuff and uh stay frosty guys we'll see you next time all right bob